let me ask you, what was it like being the first investor in OpenAI? Um, you know, were, were you just putting money on on 21, let it ride? You know, did you have insight that you thought it would be big? Is it what you expected? And what can you tell us uh, as an audience uh, as you've seen that kind of evolve um, that we yeah. should know that you, only you know? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. the thing to realize is you have to have conviction about what you're doing. These things, especially looking into the future, as Yogi Berra said, uh, is a very hard to predict. Uh, but you have to have conviction there's a directional uh, uh, trend going on that's important. I long believed in AI as a directional trend, wrote about it in 2012, uh, thought it'd be important. And hence, when the open AI opportunity came about, which was we made the decision in 2018 to invest uh, twice the amount I'd ever invested in any other company um, as a first investment. And that was because I had conviction about what AI could do. I had no idea what the timing would be or when the breakthrough moments would come. But directionally, I felt there was so much talent going into AI, it'd be really, really important. Vinod, will we be capable of having free AI doctors for every person, AI tutor for every child, um, uh, 7 to 11. You know that store, 7 to 11? No, no, 24-7. No question about it. You know, this is not even a question anymore with the capabilities of AI. Uh, we have to go through the full process of FDA approval of an app as a primary care physician, which sounds crazy to people, but almost certainly can happen if the a uh, FDA lets it happen, no question if we do a one-on-one -on -one comparison of 10,000 encounters uh, between humans handling it and an AI handling it, the AI will do substantially better, especially the more diverse the community, the most diverse the input cases, that will absolutely be true. Vinod, will we have a billion bipedal and other robots freeing humans from the servitude of undesirable jobs in the next 20 years, or is that not going to happen? Uh, I, I believe uh, robotics is coming up with a chat GPT moment here pretty soon in robotics in the next four to five years, uh, could be as soon as two or three years. Uh, we are, robots aren't programmed anymore. They are learning systems. And I think that'll be the seminal change in robotics. Uh, and they understand the physical world. They understand physics, um, real world dynamics, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> uh, and, and because of that, I'm, I'm actually pretty optimistic that many of the things that have looked very stunted and terrible because we are, humans are trying to program them, and those are like rule-based AI systems of old, uh, we'll see this rapid change. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty optimistic we'll see that happen. And then you know, nobody has to work at a GM assembly line for eight hours a day for 40 years. Uh, that's, that's not a job. That's servitude. So, Vinod, did you ever use punch cards to program? Uh, I did start on punch cards. I started my programming career in India on punch cards. So in uh, in 32 kilobit machines yeah you, you could probably guess where i'm going with this um will there be a billion plus programmers all programming not in punch cards but in human language dramatically increasing the scope of computers will computers adapt to humans not humans adapt to computers like the palm pilot they couldn't get the newton to work yeah. to read your handwriting so the, jeff said hey let's just have people adapt are we going to have a, a tipping point where we flip back um, I absolutely think so. <clears throat> Those are two entirely different concepts, uh, but let me explain them just a little bit. Uh, almost certainly, uh, people will be able to program in natural language. Um, and, and so many more applications, essentially programming will also be near free and many more people will be able to do it. Hence, the use of computers will expand dramatically. You might actually do use once software because it's so easy to do 
almost your dispatchable uh, or throwable uh, packaging for your shampoo bottle. You throw it away after use. Um, I, I think computing will become more like a utility, uh, more like electricity in the background. You, you, most people, most of the time, won't be like sitting in front of computers. Uh, hopefully, things will happen for them. Uh, I'm pretty optimistic about that. The other major change we will see is, uh, you know, so far we've had to learn how to insert a row, row in Excel or use the menu to do something or, God forbid, the macro programming language in Excel or learning to use SAP. Uh, computers will learn humans instead of humans having to learn computers. I think that'll be another major trend. And, you know, devices like the rabbit you can talk to and they do things that you need done. And they understand it, can break it down into the various tasks that might be needed. Uh, I, I'm pretty excited about that. So computers will become a lot, lot easier to use. Vinod, um, do, you, um, do you get out to movies? Do you like entertainment? I love entertainment and design, and yeah. I so, know where you're going. Yeah. So my my next yeah. So my my next question is, um, how will AI play a role in entertainment and design? Like some people say, uh, you know, the Beatles won't happen, and then this this next wave of AI because uh, you know you don't need a group; you can use AI to do it. Will the human collaborate with the AI and and be creative? And what's the future of entertainment design? Is that a dead so, end? opportunity or is that just getting started it's just getting started uh five years ago when when i first talked i uh, gave a talk in toronto give a talk about ai generating music it was met with real skepticism even derision not only do we uh, will it happen but also that we don't need it uh I think this notion some techno haters have of uh, some human elements uh, will, will will sort of disappear. I think. Uh, I think AI alone or AI plus in conjunction with humans will have uh, much more creativity. We'll see much more. What what sometimes is called soul in the music um, in. Uh, we will also see much more diversity of entertainment of uh, not only music, but everything else. And so I think broadly, we will see much more content near free, much more available, much more personalized to eat. You might get music for the mood you want to be in just before you give a talk or just before you are at an athletic event. You might get very personalized music for your brain uh, to you. So, um, uh, now, I don't want to say the the celebrity fan relationship is going to change. You know, Taylor, Taylor Swift will still be there and Swifties will still be there. But that doesn't take away. Uh, so this AI music doesn't take away from that relationship and that kind of uh, performance or entertainment. Um, next question is just a one word uh, uh, answer. Are you a Swifty? No. OK. All right. Internet. Agents access. What what comes to mind on those words? You know, um, I think most use of the internet will be by agents. It won't be by humans. Twenty four seven, there'll be billions and maybe tens of billions of agents running around, multiple ones for each of us, doing specialized things for us. Uh, Almost, uh, if each of us had multiple assistants to do things for us. So most internet access, in my view, will be by agents, not by human beings. That might have some implications on how content on the internet needs to change. Um, so Vinod, uh, I'm curious, open versus closed. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And um, You've been, uh, are you passionate about it one way or the other? And ha has your opinion uh, changed over the years on that? You know, so uh, my opinion hasn't changed a lot. 
you know, Sun was the first really open source company. NFS was, was the first major product you think of even before Linux. Uh, so uh, that's uh, pretty exciting. Uh, you know, we are investors in GitLab. Uh, so I've been a big fan of open source. Now, in the case of state-of-the-art th- uh, models, I feel like open source shouldn't be prohibited. It's like open sourcing the Manhattan Project because we have an adversary in China, and I believe the AI race is so important. Whichever country, whether the West wins it uh, or liberal value countries build it more generally because I consider uh, many, many countries around the world liberal values companies, or China wins it will have huge implications for the planet, and I hope we win it. And, and hence, we shouldn't be open sourcing state-of-the-art models. Everything else is fine. In terms of AI, what are you most excited about and, and what, what keeps you up at night and you're most worried about? You know, the, the hard thing in AI is to predict what capability will show up. Uh, GPT-5 hopefully is coming soon. What will GPT-6 be like? When will uh, GPT-X start training X plus one? Uh, Those are a set of things to worry about. It impacts the rate of change. Um, I wonder if once we have AI programmers uh, like Devin, uh, are we going to see really, really interesting progress? But at some point, these AI systems will be designing other AI systems, and then you have real issues there. Um, that's on the on the model side. I'm also pretty optimistic uh, about something most people don't believe, that within the next two, two years or three years, we'll start to see uh, more, more, more interesting alternative approaches that add substantially to the LLM model is the right way to say it. Um, so you might see other approaches like probabilistic programming. There's a group at MIT very interested in that. You might see symbolic logic. Uh, I'm pretty excited about a company we have called Symbolica that's doing something called category theory. In fact, it's funny, nobody's heard of it, but I've run into two or three startups doing category theory, including one at MIT. Um, so these are esoteric areas. They're, they're sort of the what OpenAI might have looked like uh, in 2018. Um, you know, uh, so the theory is there. The attention paper was out, and, and then you didn't see its implications. So I think they will all all be additive to uh, current models. Uh, so that's sort of the model side. I think will continue to evolve pretty substantially. Um, then we have the application side, and we've sort of talked much about it. You know, uh, there'll be a lot of copilot type applications. Almost um, everybody uh, sh- uh, should be able to use a copilot for most things they do. Why a physician would ever have to use Epic, I don't know. They shouldn't need to. Uh, An AI will do that for them. Uh, but the areas, um, and there'll be lots of new consumer applications, how shopping is done, uh, how we've talked about music or games will all be impacted. There'll be regular enterprise. But the area I'm most excited about is when you replace human expertise. Uh, we've talked about near-free doctors. We've talked about near-free tutors. Uh, I think we'll have near um, oncologists, structural engineers, uh, you name it. We'll do, so expertise, we'll have geologists so we can discover a lot more mineral resources. That's an area I'm very interested in. Uh, so that, that that side will also go through a lot of innovation. In fact, I think a lot of media will be reinvented too. We have a book publisher that uses AI and they can, they're 10x better than the best book publishers in in picking out hits that might be million dollar wins, which is a good level for a book. So Vinod, um, what advice do you have for college students uh, who are thinking of dropping out or maybe finishing on areas to focus on? Is software engineering dead uh, and what skills are needed? 
I don't think it's fair to make any assumptions. Um, I think the best software engineers will become 10x or maybe 100x engineers. Well, they'll still be needed, but they'll be a lot more capable, or powerful, amplified by AI. Uh, simple programmers will become better programmers. What I would say in general uh, to young people is be as diverse as possible in the things you learn. Don't plan on learning your career now, but do the co courses or that help you learn how to learn so you can adapt rapidly. The one thing for sure, we will have to keep changing what we do. Nothing we learn today in class will be relevant 10 years from now. Uh, so mostly what you have to do is learn to learn and be able to change fields rapidly. Did now, you know that different there was... advice for PhD students? That's a very different thing. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this. Did you know that there was a board kind of Shakespeare drama at OpenAI? Were you, were you aware of that? No, I didn't hear about it. Yeah. So, you know, this is an intimate conversation, you and me here. Do you want to say anything, weigh in on that, that no one knows what really happened or went on? Well, the only comment I would make in general is, uh, is the broader issue is one of how you handle risk. Uh, AI systems do have risk, but we have lots of risk as society. We are... Uh, an asteroid could hit the planet too. That's a re real risk. Another really big risk is another pandemic. So uh, humanity faces a whole basket of risks. And so you learn to manage them, you learn to pay attention. You don't go overboard on one thing, especially, you know, EA was a Jonestown-like religion. It's just completely irrational. It pretended to be rational. It's completely irrational. Uh, in, and so um, ignoring every other risk in humanity, ignoring all the benefits of humanity, um, it's just silly. Um, how do you like how do you use AI? Like when you wake up in the morning, you know, does it brush your teeth? You know, are you an AI right now? Do you use AIs to, um, you know, how are you using AI and how has that changed from a week ago, a month ago, uh, five years ago? So before I go, I would say to you, I think we have to take a long view of AI, even AI applications and the silly, you know, you have to realize the press needs headlines, so they have to make headlines. And they have to show how silly X or Y is or why this hand that mid-journey produced has the six fingers, not five. By the way, nature does that sometimes too. Um, but we have to take the long view. All of these systems are so new. Version 10 of them will be mature or somewhere near what we might consider mature. And so we have to be patient and say they, they're good at some things, they're not good at others. And what we have to do is use them enough, start the flywheel, data flywheel, and what, what doesn't work so we can fix it. And every generation, every year will be better than the last. And that's what I'm optimistic about. And the rate of growth will become exponential. Systems that evolve to be better are almost always better than engineered systems that are precise in one, one dimension. And once AI gets to be really learning system, which is, it isn't quite today, I think we'll see even faster um, uh, the, uh, progress. Um, so my last question to you, uh, Vinod, is um, are you having fun? I'm having a blast. I mean, how can it not be fun working on all the things we've just talked about? And I work on those and a lot of other fun things like Fusion and Mach 5 Flight and all that kind of stuff. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you've been Vinod Kosla. Vinod Kosla.